We have uh, been talking about the simplex algorithm and then also duality. And one of the things that we've seen is how when we run the simplex algorithm on the primal, we uh, reveal properties of the dual. But of course, we could also just take the dual and run simplex algorithm uh, on that. Um, so we're going to talk about how uh, something in between, how um, how we could, we could, without changing our tableau, without changing our, our whole perspective and basically treating the dual as the primal, how we can use that same simplex tableau that we've seen to, uh, to run dual, to run dual updates. Um, okay, so let me, uh, remind you, we're in, we're in standard form. So we've got, uh, minimize C transpose X subject to a X equals B X non negative. And again, the, the dual here is maximizing P transpose B subject to P transpose a less than C transpose and P is free. So what is uh, the primal simplex algorithm doing? We mentioned this uh, already in a previous uh, in a previous slide, but you know up top it's got c bar which is equal to c minus c b transpose a b inverse a. Here we've got a b inverse a, and here we have a b inverse b, and uh, and, and here we have the negative cost. Uh, negative. Um, CB transpose B. So, sorry, uh, negative CB transpose XB or negative CB transpose AB inverse B. Okay, so going from BFS to BFS, we choose our pivot and we choose how far we move, uh, how far we can move by maintaining um, XB greater than or equal to zero. So primal simplex maintains xb greater than or equal to zero. And by definition of xb, by virtue of the fact that xb is equal to ab inverse b, we know that we are always satisfying ax equals to b. So in other words, primal simplex maintains primal feasibility and seeks to improve the optimal, the optimal cost. Um, and it works towards uh, improving the cost, or to put it exactly in the terms of simplex algorithm, it works towards um, getting to a basic feasible solution that has a non-negative reduced cost. It works towards getting a C bar that's non-negative, which as mentioned before is exactly equal to dual feasibility. This is P transpose A. In other words, it works towards P transpose A is less than or equal to C. So we could um, think about this in, in, a, in, a, in a different way. Um, so instead, the dual simplex method, which is going to operate on the same tableau, instead of maintaining primal feasibility, that means this column non-negative, and working towards dual feasibility, which is, which is, having, which is having this column, uh, this row, the zeroth row be non-negative, it's going to do the reverse. Dual simplex is going to maintain dual feasibility. So it means at every iteration, it's going to have P transpose A less than C, and it's gonna to work towards primal feasibility. And works towards primal feasibility, namely 
a b inverse b greater than or equal to zero. Because as we've seen, not any basis corresponds to an extreme point. If you just choose any m out of the n columns and you look at a b inverse b, that may not be non-negative. And in that case, it's going to be what's called a basic solution, but not a basic feasible solution. So the terminology here is as follows. Um, for B, a basis such that A, B inverse B is not non-negative, X, which is equal to X, B, zero, is called a basic solution, but not a basic feasible solution. So this is, uh, this is what uh, the dual simplex um, algorithm is going to do. So <clears throat> again, what do we, how, do we, how do we start this? We have, um, we have a basic solution. That means we have a basis B, that's a subset of the indices one through N, exactly as before. B is equal to M, but XB, which is equal to AB inverse B, is not gonna be component-wise non-negative. So, uh, so let's draw our, uh, our, our tableau again to see what, this, uh, what happens here. So up top, I've got my C bar, which is equal to C minus CB transpose AB inverse A. And here I've got my AB inverse B and AB inverse matrix A. And we're going to assume that our starting point we have a, we have that we have a basis B, which makes this zeroth row non-negative, but doesn't necessarily make the zeroth column non-negative. If, if we did, then we're we're in luck and we're and we are primal, dual, feasible, and and optimal. So let's assume that B is such that uh, C bar is non-negative, that's dual feasibility. Um, and again, what we want is A, B inverse B to be non-negative and we may not have this. So what are we gonna do? Previously, what we did is we had the zeroth row was uh, non-negative. Sorry, we wanted it to be non-negative and so what we were doing is when we introduced a new column into the basis, we would, uh, we would choose that column based on what element of that zeroth row was negative. And then we would find the pivot row. How did we find the pivot row? We found it by making sure that our update would maintain non-negativity of the zeroth column. In other words, primal feasibility. And then we would add it to the zeroth row. Now we're going to do the reverse. We're not going to start, we're going to find again a pivot element. We're going to pivot using, um, using, using row operations, exactly as we did before. That means that we are, we're going to continue to maintain A, B, inverse A. That, the part of the mechanics are going to be exactly the same. We will have an identity matrix sitting in here wherever the elements of B are. Except instead of choosing a non-negative, instead of choosing a, non a, a negative element in this row, and then figuring out that, okay, this is our column, and then figuring out the row by looking at the, by looking at the ratios of required for maintaining non-negativity of this, we're gonna do the reverse. We are going to find which of these elements is negative. And we're going to choose one of those. That's going to define our row. So in other words, we're going to see what is impeding us from being primal feasible. The same way that now that we've talked about duality, we can interpret the simplex algorithm as saying which of these uh, columns 
is impeding us from being dual feasible. That we're going to do exactly um, the same thing here. So let's draw that. Let's let's just draw that out a little bit more, more carefully. So here is um, again the same picture, my dual simplex. So what we're the, so the first step is first I'm going to choose a row. I'm choose a row. How do we choose it? We pick a row with um, x b i negative. We're going to pick one of these rows that has that that is not primal feasible, where this this element here is uh, is not feasible. Okay, so now let's let, let's name this row. This is this has elements v1, v2, up to v n. In primal simplex, we first chose a column. Now, how do we choose a uh, how do we choose a column here? Well, um, I'm going to look <clears throat> at all of these v's. You know what 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 is it what what is it that, uh, that that we want to do? I want to make um, I want to choose a jth row. Let's call this a jth column. I want to make this zero. Make when I introduce that into the basis because we know that is what simplex algorithm does. It must have zeros for reduced cost for anything that's already in for something that's in the basis. And so currently, I've got some zeros sitting up here corresponding to what's already in the basis. And everything else that's not zero is positive because we have dual feasibility. It's different from simplex, uh, from the simplex algorithm. So this is called the pivot row that we've already chosen, that I've drawn. And we choose the pivot column. by looking at you know we know what we're going to do we're going to in order to make this in order to make this element zero what are we going to do we're going to be adding a multiple of uh, we're going to be adding a multiple of the pivot row to the zeroth row and that means it's going to drop the value of the zeroth row wherever I have negative values in here and I want to find the, the I want to, I'm going to choose my pivot column to be the one that is going to first hit as I, as I move in that direction. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to be the J that first hits zero. I don't want it to become negative because then I've lost feasibility of the, of the dual. So in other words, that J is the winner of, I guess I'll call it J hat is, is, um, the winner of uh, minimizing over all i such that vi is negative, I've got my v1, v2, etc. in this pivot row, of the reduced cost divided by, I could just write minus vi, but I'll just write absolute value of, of, um, of, uh, of vi. And I'm adding that element, uh, so I'm, and I'm going to add this much, this multiple of this of the row to the zeroth row, and that will make this value zero, and everything else will be ma maintained non-negative. And um, let's see uh, what. Um, and, 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 and so this is and, and so this is how the the dual simplex algorithm works exactly the same uh, exactly the same tableau except my zeroth row is always non negative and I'm always uh, I'm always working towards getting that zeroth column to be uh, to be um, to be non negative as well so um, this is the dual simplex algorithm. Now you could um, take, just try to write out the, uh, the dual problem and treat that as the primal and run simplex on it. So I encourage you to try that and compare and see how that relates to uh, the dual simplex algorithm as I presented it here.
obviously the tableau is going to be very different. If you take the dual, treat it as a primal, put it in standard form, etc., you're going to be doing uh, the same operations as, as, you, as I introduced in the previous lecture when we talked about simplex. So, so it's, a, it's a useful exercise for you to try to see the exact relationship between that and what I've presented here. <clears throat> Our next step is going to be in using uh, simplex method and this kind of uh, primal dual thinking of maintaining a primal feasible solution and, and trying, or a dual feasible solution and trying to improve that and always trying to use complementary slackness to derive a general framework uh, called the primal dual algorithm. And that again is, is going to be very useful. So we're going to pick that up, uh, pick that up next time.